G'day, I'm Dale Blackwood and welcome to Completely Cook Games, where I completely cook a game here on YouTube, upload the results for you to eat on itch.io. So what are we making in this first Completely Cook game? Well, we're going to make a little puzzle arena thing, just like Captain Toad. And what better to go with it than a little cooperative mode. And what other ingredients do we have? A little bit of a frantic challenge. And we're going to be making all of this in Godot. Chuck those ingredients in there. And uh, we'll be mixing up some stuff in Blender. And lastly, we'll be texturing in Inkscape. So I have no idea how well this will turn out or what I'll build, what's going on. I've got eight hours to do it. So let's see how we go. Chef's up. So the first thing we're going to need is definitely a design. We're going to have something to build towards. So I grabbed my wife, Millie, and we opened up Inkscape and we put together this board right here. So some of the things that I was interested in was the way that Captain Toad has everyone on the one screen at the same time uh, and the camera kind of rotates around them and the levels have a lot of verticality. Uh, Millie kind of mentioned that you can go up and down like a cat in Cat Mario, so that's a great way to escalate a tower. You could have a car park where, you know, it's multi-level and you kind of climb up the car park as you go. And what we eventually uh, arrived upon was climbing a corporate ladder because you can kind of have a multi-level thing where it's, you know, you go from the warehouse all the way up to CEO and get your own dick spaceship. So in order to build this prototype quickly and effectively, I'm going to need some tools. I'm going to use the Godot game engine, which has a lovely feature called grid mapping, which is kind of similar to Minecraft in that you place blocks that are predefined into a structure. That'll be what I use to create my levels. In order to create those blocks, I'm going to use 3D software Blender, which uh, will allow me to yeah, craft them, model them up, and then import them into Godot. I'm gonna texture them using Inkscape and GIMP. I'll use all of those to taste. Most of these are open source tools. And lastly, in order to time this jam, I'm gonna use my own tool, which is Spread Jam Timer. It's a plugin for OBS, which allows you to count the total footage of the jam. And that's how I know that I'm in under the eight hour mark. So with that in mind, I think I'm pretty much ready to go. So, uh, all right. Let's do it. So the first step is to set up the project and create all the folders I need and set up a new project in Godot. The whole game is going to start in a warehouse and work its way up from then. So the first thing I'm going to need is a warehouse floor and the first piece of the warehouse floor is the floor tile block. So I'm going to start texturing that straight away in Inkscape and then bring it across to Blender and then model it up in the right size there we go, texture the whole thing, and then bring it across to Godot. Now in Godot, I'm going to import the model I just created and put it in a new scene on its own. I'm going to export that scene as a mesh library and then start painting immediately with it. As you can see, now that my block is part of a mesh library, it's easy for me to draw with it and to create levels. So I'm going to create a floor and then I'm going to try to make a maze or something like that. It's pretty clear to me at this stage that the maze doesn't read very clearly. So I'm going to make a second texture. I'm going to make it a wood texture just for contrast and I'll give it the same treatment. Put it in the mesh library and start painting the maze with it. And there we go, that looks much clearer. That pretty much forms the basis of our level building technology. So I think it's time we move over to the characters and players. When it comes to characters, I recognize that I don't really have enough time during this jam to fully rig, model, and animate humanoids for the game. So I started looking at visual shorthand that I might be able to use. And the first place I started was icons. So I recognize that there's icons for various levels within an organization. I started by looking up CEO and uh, you know then looked up director, manager, and kept working through it, got white collar worker there, and you've got here your warehouse worker. So really between them, there's actually quite a lot of um, you know, distinct sort of style to each of them. And that started getting me thinking about chess, uh, where you have very simple looking tokens. You know, the knight doesn't look anything like a knight. Um, it looks more like a horse, if I'm to be perfectly honest. Uh, the rook here looks 
pretty much like somebody ripped a portion of a castle off. Uh, the bishop, actually that's exactly right, and the king and queen there, um, I think, have been turned into monoliths. And it kind of reminded me of Double Fine stacking. Here we have a whole family, we've got the dad over that side, we've got the mum over that side, the two kids, and it kind of shows you most of the work is being pulled by the texturing. I mean, there's some hats there to help out. But uh, I think that's definitely within reach of this prototype. So let's do that. I'm going to open up Blender and start fashioning a generic pawn out of a couple of spheres. I kind of want to shape it somewhere between a nesting doll and a chess pawn so that I've got something generic I can share between my models. Then I'm going to start texturing it in Inkscape. I'm going to start with the CEO, give him some hair, some skin, a suit, a tie, all that sort of stuff. I'm only going to draw the left side of the texture and I'll mirror it when I get back into Blender. That looks a bit like a CEO, so I'm going to go across to Blender and I'm going to start applying this texture to the model. First I'm going to mirror it and then I'm going to need to move it around just a little bit and stretch it just to get the focus into the right areas. I'll have to jump back into Inkscape a couple of times and tweak the original image. This has taken me the better part of an hour so it's time to get it into Godot and there's our CEO. Well if you can't work as a team you're all fired. It was at this point that I realized I'd missed a trick and that all the players should probably be pawns. Everyone on floor four is fired. So far everything has been really art focused, but now there's no more time for fun and games because we've got a code so that we can implement the fun and games. I'm going to start with the player controller, implement that straight in GD script, and I'm going to have a rough go at a very loose camera to go along with it. And hopefully that'll give us our first interactivity. I'm going to take our CEO model and house it in a kinematic body and give it a collider. And once I've got that set up, I can start making the player controller. In the player controller, I'm going to capture the input from the keyboard every frame. I'll put in controller support later, but this will do for now. I'll then apply that input to the kinematic body every physics update. I've also done some rough code to get the camera to look at the player so that we've got something to look at. And I'm making some adjustments to the level just so that there's a little bit more room to move in. Next, I've added some code to make sure that he's facing the direction that he's traveling in, and also a little bit of code just to make it so that he doesn't start and stop immediately, to make his movement feel a little bit more fluid. Honestly, the player control code came together a lot more quickly than I anticipated. Godot's built-in kinematic functions are really easy to use. I mean, it's not one click, but it's pretty much just set the velocity and it carries it out and does all the physics collisions for you. I wanted a mechanic to go alongside moving and ultimately figured that delivering packages would be the right way for you to get to the top. So I went about texturing a package in Inkscape before starting upon the rigorous process that is modeling a package by hand in Blender. This baby has over seven polygons in it. Back in Godot, I spend a good hour writing a carrying system so the player can pick up and put down packages. Because we all know you're not getting to the top of a major packaging company unless you can move a package like a pro. The player is going to place those packages in sorting bins, so I texture, model, import and code those as well. And as you can see, there's a bit of a pipeline forming. Next up, we're making conveyor belts. I'll texture a small amount of the conveyor belt and loop it around the outside like crazy. These conveyor belts can be loaded with packages and take them to their destination, and I'm certain it's going to add a whole layer of puzzle complexity that'll be fun. Just picking it up. Just put it on the conveyor belt. It's conveying. It's going in the bin. Yeah. All right, here we go again. Conveying in the bin. You beauty. So now that you can clear packages out, I need something to happen when you've cleared them all out. So I made a lift and made it so that its doors don't open until the packages are delivered. So now in order to beat the level, the players need to put all the packages in the bins and go into the lift. So now that our warehouse workers can successfully complete deliveries, we need to find some kind of challenge, something to make them fail. And what better way to do that than to add some time pressure? So what kinds of time pressure could a warehouse worker possibly face? America, fuck yeah. So I diligently programmed a shader that would fill our guy up with piss, and I definitely did it within the 8 hour time limit. Ka <laughs> 
So now the little fella is absolutely bursting at the seams and we've got to find some way for him to resolve his personal irrigation problem. So we build him a place to stand and we build him some darkness to stand in and let him be the efficient little employee that he was always meant to be. Right, so you can win and you can lose and you can relieve yourself in order to extend your playtime. Pretty much everything from the gameplay is there, but we have about 37 minutes left on the clock and no user interface in sight. So uh, this is gonna be a tight finish. I've gotta put in a title screen. I've gotta get the game started. I'd like a second level, but 37 minutes is not really second level kind of time. Uh, the game is on. All right, quickly, messaging system, make the UI, make it quick load, call it from anywhere, title, subtitle, bam, on the screen. All right, next, hook it up to the game. A message when you start, a message when you piss yourself, a message when you lose, a message when you open the lift, a message when you fucking, message, next. Title screen, press space to start, import the logo. Ooh, look at the logo. Next, make another level, copy the first one, erase this, put in that, that'll do, next. Eight minutes left, uh, win screen. Copy the title screen and, uh, good, next. One minute left, move the players to the spawn points. Uh, done. So there you go, all done with only six seconds to spare. So uh, we didn't really need the whole eight hours, did we? So what did we get out of that? Well, we got two levels, we got a start screen, we got an end screen, we got a title space, we've got one player. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do the co-op thing just yet. We'll continue on in another video with that and some more levels. Time again, I would have liked to have gotten some extra levels done. Honestly. Hold up, just one second. There's a bug. But it's not a bug in the game code. No, it's a bug in the timing code. You see, the OBS plugin that I made counts videos twice if you rename them. And I just happen to rename them as I go along. So how much time does that mean that we actually have left in the jam? About one hour and three minutes, which is great news because I've got levels I want to make and I definitely wanted to put co-op into this game. So without further ado, cue the loud fast music. First up, let's replace those wooden blocks with some shelves to get this looking like a warehouse. And now we're gonna make some more levels. So I had a tutorial level, another level, a level with a red herring, a level with a maze, and all up now we have six levels. Can we do co-op? We can if we make the players automatically spawn in front of the lift and add some input code for a second player. And now it's co-op, so we'll add the two player mode to the start screen. We'll create a warehouse worker texture for the second player and give him a hat. And there are the two players in the game beside each other. Change the background color, put in the title credits, and done. So there you have it. Our very first completely cooked game, amazing package delivery. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. The meal preparation time was seven hours and 57 minutes, and we came in just under the eight hours with three minutes short there. Of course, there was that timer hiccup in the middle, which definitely caused me to shit my pants and worry that I ran out of time well before I expected, but we recovered from the jam. It gave me a lot more time to focus on levels in that final hour. So what did we end up getting in there? We got in cooperative features. We got six levels, pretty good for a jam. And we got, you know, that competitive feel, game screen, all that sort of thing. It's got a game loop to it. What I didn't get to do was sound and music. Usually in the first eight hours, I won't. And the other thing I didn't really get to do was, uh, you know, multiple environments because I'd love to do you know, we've got a warehouse for Amazing Package Delivery Company, but maybe Amazing Package Delivery Company delivers books, TV shows, or maybe they deliver web services of some kind. Who knows? The entire game is available right about now on itch.io. The link is in the description. I've also made the entire source code for the game and the timer available. And also a couple of tweaks that I made to the Godot grid map system that I'm sure will be useful if you plan to use it yourself in the future. Look, I've had a lot of fun doing this and it definitely turned out better than I expected. So I'm probably gonna do this again. So share this around to a couple of mates, do all the things that make the algorithm happy, chuck it a thumb up, <laughs> subscribe to it, send it to someone, all of that stuff will really help. And if you do use any of the code or tips in your own projects, I'd love to hear about it in the comments or any tricks you think that I missed. And as I say in every video, I'd like to declare this game completely cooked. All right, getting ready. First one. 
Oh no, I picked it up. <laughs> but, I'm getting out the door. No, ah! Let me in, <laughs> let me in. Damn it. Let this run. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to package to the, the hell out of this. Also, I'm taking this hero spot. And I'm going to try to come in the door. <laughs> Go play the bloody game. The link is in the description. Good on you, mate. Have a good go at it.